Ever wondered why life seems so scary sometimes? I found myself asking this question the other day when I was contemplating making a new YouTube video. And here's the thing, right? I, I like making YouTube videos. But somehow, I found myself resisting the process. I procrastinated and gave myself excuses until the point where even looking at my YouTube channel made me feel uncomfortable. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it hit me. I was scared to make a new video. But... Why? I'd made loads of videos before, this wasn't a new thing. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that what I was afraid of had almost nothing to do with the video. So then the question was, why was I afraid, right? If I'd made videos before and it wasn't a new thing, why was this one different? To find the answer to that, I had to look inward. So I read some books, and this video is about how I learned to let go of a lot of my fears by seeing them in a completely different light, and how you can do the exact same thing. So it turns out that most of us deep down have pretty similar core fears that end up presenting themselves in a million different ways. And when we feel afraid, generally we're trying to avoid anything that could lead us to experience that core fear. For instance, a fear of heights is of course not a fear of heights, but is a fear of falling, which is a fear of hitting the ground. And you could probably even say it is a fear of loss of control, leading to falling, leading to death. Core fears are a lot more primal. They'll present as a fear of unworthiness or fear of being betrayed, fear of abandonment or loss or rejection. The first step is to acknowledge that this is where most of our fears actually come from. And it's kind of hilariously simple and almost a little sad as to how they get so deeply integrated into us. So the question then becomes, what are you actually afraid of? For instance, I, it occurred to me, was not afraid of making YouTube videos. I wasn't even afraid of making bad YouTube videos. People make millions of bad YouTube videos every single day. I was afraid that if I made a YouTube video not focused on travel, then I would not be exciting enough as a person. Why would somebody want to watch me just talk about things, I asked myself. What could I do that would entertain somebody that didn't involve traveling to another country or showing pretty pictures? Besides, I didn't have an interesting studio backdrop to use or good lighting setup. Ultimately, the fear was that all of these little things would combine to prove to me what I was internally afraid of already. And when you think about it, that's kind of fucking stupid, right? It's an awful lot of pressure to put on the back of a simple YouTube video. Fear, as it turns out, isn't real. Will Smith said that in some movie that I never watched. Author David Hawkins writes that emotions are something we experience internally that we project onto the world and blame the world for. And the more I thought about that, the more I realized that I was in fact blaming that fear on the world when it was coming from within. If I were to list the number one thing I would credit to holding me back in life over the last five to ten years, it would primarily be fear. Fear that in the past I had projected onto other people or things. I would say, oh, it's too scary to travel alone. It's too scary for me to get gigs as a professional photographer. It's too scary for me to make YouTube videos. I originally wanted to make YouTube videos five years ago, but I was so afraid that I didn't start. I let fear of what other people would think or judge me for stop me from creating the things that I wanted to. So here's a tip. Don't externalize your fear. Don't project your fears onto other objects or people. Realize that most of your fear, if not all of your fear, comes from an internal sense of inadequacy that generally does not exist. Those fears are just a presentation of an internal, deeply held fear that you don't normally acknowledge. For example, the fear of running out of money or losing your job might come from an internal fear of not being valuable, or an internal fear of not being able to cope with change. Fear of never being able to get into a romantic relationship or losing one you might already have might come from a sense of unworthiness. When we're infants, these so-called core fears, uh, abandonment, unworthiness, being unlovable, being betrayed, they all represent real life-threatening potential. When we are children, being unworthy or unlovable means we will die because somebody will not take care of us and we need them to survive. These end up getting written into our brains as programs that get ran on repeat over and over and over, so that things that threaten that sense of security internally still feel life-threatening years later when they are objectively not. When we're infants, these fears are life-threatening. If we are abandoned, we will die. But the mechanism continues to operate long into adulthood and we continue to perceive now non-life-threatening events as being life-threatening. To your mental state, being emotionally abandoned feels almost like getting attacked by a lion. They're equally as scary, even though one is clearly more dangerous to you objectively. And it's usually the lion in most cases. 
So when you find yourself trapped in a pattern of fear or anxiety, especially if it's vague fear or anxiety or dread, look inward, breathe for a second, look inward and ask yourself where it's coming from. Is it coming from that internal voice that was formed many, many, many years ago when it correlated being abandoned with death, with being unworthy with death? What is the origin of that fear? And often it's one of those primal core fears, the core wounds we have from when we were children. And it continues to present itself over and over and over in new ways, disguising itself as different more relevant fears that your brain will rationalize as being right until you go internally and deal with those core fears those core wounds that have held you back for years and years and years your brain will come up with rationalizations for fears you have now as to why they are different because your adult fully grown brain the rational part of it understands that a lion is more dangerous than a breakup but to that primal part of your brain that primal coding we learned 20 plus years ago that primal programming tells us that if we get abandoned we will die if we are unworthy or unlovable we will die. And for many of us, that core fear prevents us from engaging in activities we might want to. For instance, for me, making a YouTube video because I had the thought process that I don't have a cool studio backdrop. I don't have good experience talking to people on camera. I'm not good enough to do that. I'm the travel photography video guy. I do adventure stuff. If I don't have an outdoor backdrop, if I don't have an adventure theme, who's going to watch it? Why will I be worthy? But I realized that allowing that to block me from creating what I wanted to was simply giving into an irrational fear pattern that I didn't really care about anymore. So if you find yourself trapped in a pattern of fear, take a deep breath for a second, go internally and ask yourself where that fear is coming from. The fear of public speaking comes from a fear of rejection for making a mistake, the feeling of being seen as publicly wrong and rejected, abandoned by the group. It has nothing to do with actually talking in front of people. Fear of being alone as an adult comes from that deep inner feeling as a child where being alone equals death. As an adult, it's not actually that scary, but we have to work through those primal codes that we ingrained in our brain so long ago. When we examine our fear really closely, we can tell that in most cases, it's that inner child still pulling the strings behind the scenes. It's 20 year old code that is still running your mind. And as real as this fear feels when it's ambiguous and ominous, it's simply not real. It's simply not true in most scenarios. And this sounds weird, but I promise you it will work. Next time you feel super scared about something or unsure or uncertain, look inward, take a deep breath for a second, look inward and connect with that internal child mentality that is still speaking to you because I promise you somewhere it is there and you'll be able to go in, give yourself a hug or a pat on the back and say, it's okay. I know you were afraid of this, but I got this because I'm now an adult and I can cope with this kind of thing. Back when we were a little kid, that shit was deadly, but now it's really not that bad. It still feels bad, but objectively you can now handle it when in the past you couldn't. And tell that inner child voice, hey, I got this. I will take care of you. That's one of the most interesting things is now you can be for yourself that adult presence you needed as a child. You can now actually take care of yourself in a way that that child voice thinks is impossible because that child voice could not take care of itself. So for me, that meant facing that fear and making a YouTube video primarily while laying on my face on the floor of my bedroom. So here's an exercise. The next time you feel afraid of something, especially if it's something vague that you can't specifically put your finger on, allow yourself a moment to not project it externally, not say it's a fear because of something else, but go inward Look at that child voice and see what it's telling you. See if there's a deeply hidden fear of unworthiness or abandonment and you're projecting it onto external forces in the world as if that's where it originated from. Look inward and see maybe that fear is coming from somewhere within you. And if it comes from within you, it's way easier for you to move through it. You have a great, tremendous amount of ability to influence what goes on in your own psyche, your own feelings, your own emotions. So with that comes a tremendous sense of power because now you have the ability to go in, help that internal child work through these fears with the capabilities you now have as a fully grown adult. Now, there's probably Probably part of your brain that's saying that won't work for me I'm not that kind of person I can't do that my problems are different if that sounds familiar check out this video right here it's about overthinking and how you can overcome it and use it to motivate you in your life am I not in focus I'm gonna be pissed if that wasn't in focus
I'll use the voiceover, I guess. <laughs>